Yeah. Thanks, guys. I am here with Wesley. So just knocked Fabiano Caruana out of the competition. Wesley, congrats. Yeah, I'm still in the tournament. It's always a pleasure and a big bonus to beat Fabi because he's beat me so many times in, in the past. Like also, the Singfield Cup was a very important game. And uh, also many years ago, 2018, to qualify for the Grand Chess Tour in London. So I had many bad results against Fabi, so it's always nice to win whenever, <laughs> whenever I can. And uh, I'd like to thank the Lord for the victory, of course. But I mean, at the end of the day, uh, Blitz, I think w when it came to a two-game Blitz match, it's anybody's match, really, I think. Fabian and I are very closely, uh, very close in strength in terms of blitz, especially for such a short mm -hmm. match. So couldn't really take credit for playing better or anything. You know, it's just a blitz, basically. Yeah. Throw of the dice. I want to ask you about this last game, but um, can I first just get your thoughts on the overall trajectory of the match? You lost the first game, and you had to come back. No, I lost the second. Oh, second game, excuse me. No, actually... I was very pleased with the way that I played today. Seems that as the tournament continues, my play has improved day by day, so hopefully it stays that way. Um, well, uh, the first game he played this night, E2 Nimsa, which is quite surprising. I played it with White also, and I thought it's nothing for White. Or maybe he was slightly better. The thing is, Fab, I've been playing the Queen's Gambit decline against Fabi with Black. Uh, the past few months, and then I keep losing. Even in the team chess battle, we lost. Mm -hmm. So I thought I played the Nimso, but he's very good at these structures. But I, I don't think quite has anything. And then he should probably just start to make a draw, but then he over pushed. And then he, and then I was better. Like his pawns on d4, h4 were hanging. I'm sure that, unless I'm crazy, I'm sure there gotta be a, a, a win for Black there somewhere. So I was I very believe, disappointed. Yeah, you were winning that. Uh... Yes, yeah, so I was. I was very disappointed because uh, he overpushed, and mm -hmm. then I outplayed him. And then if you win with black in any match, then you're well on your way to victory. And then in the second game, uh, I decided to play this new opening, but I should just have taken the draw start in the end game or repeated moves. Like he was playing so quickly, he had ten minutes, and I had four. It's just he's got very good time management the entire match, so. And then he played very well. In the end, he found this rook d8, king b7, which I think is very difficult to spot. Mm -hmm. But for him, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> and then the third game, what was the third game? Oh, yeah, the third game was just, I basically had to win with the white pieces, which is never ideal. Somehow I, I managed. And then the fourth game, he just decided to take it to the blitz. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the third game, I shouldn't have won because I played knight g1, he had rook h2 in the end. Right. But... Uh, uh, yeah, I have to have to take my chances. So it's it's nice that I won. It's not really. Yeah. What? Um, I just want to ask you about this last uh, blitz game here. We'll get the board up on the screen in just a moment. Of course, um, Fabi's a point behind, so he plays the king's Indian, has to win. You had a big advantage. Yeah, knight of d7, move seven was a bad start. <laughs> All our new yeah. move seven. I mean, apparently the. Comp Maybe I shouldn't have played e5, but apparently the computer says take, so I'm mm -hmm. gonna take with the pawn, the knight g4. I don't know how strong this computer is, but apparently, yeah, I miss he has queen d7 here. Oh, okay, and then... Yeah. It turns and, out this is kind of all right for black, yeah. Yeah, and then black could be even a little bit better, or maybe it's just equal. But maybe I shouldn't have played e5 because, uh, I mean, knight takes is okay, and it's very hard to lose, but... Um, yeah, again, it's it's blitz. Like after knight d7, it's just a very bad position for black mm -hmm. because like some Alekhine defense where he wasted time moving the knight, but also the queen is in a bad spot. So I think after this, he never really got much winning chances. I mean, I think I think even here, yeah, white's just much better all the way. So he never really got anything going. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you about the final moment because it was. Uh you, know, yeah. you guys had seconds, and yeah, um, you found this perpetual at the end, but we were wondering at what moment yeah. exactly did you see this idea of like knight c8? Like no, when we got here. <laughs> 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 like obviously I was going to play queen e8, check, and then... Uh -huh. But the thing is like I was pretty sure, I mean I could just push the c-pawn obviously, 
but then I I didn't see Bishop D3. But I knew I had a perpetual at the very least because even if I play like Queen, oh, queen E7, Queen F4, okay. But I mean, check. Like I think even Knight F6 is a perpetual, right? Yeah, check King E7, Knight G8, mm -hmm. and then Knight F6. Like the King right. could never run. So I saw like. Black's dark squares are very weak, so I knew I, I always had perpetual, but I wasn't sure exactly. Okay, rook f1. Okay, maybe queen e7, bishop f1. Okay, I missed queen f4. But I knew I had the perpetual here at any point. Maybe even, is queen d8 a draw? Or queen d8 loses? Yeah, even queen d8 is a draw. Check, check. Yeah, if you go h6, there's queen h4 mm. mate. And so there's tons of perpetual. And then apparently the computer says this is just winning, but with seconds on the clock, <laughs> I have yeah. no, no courage no, to play could. c6. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have queen e7, C6. and at the very least, white as a perpetual, but apparently it's mate. Right. But I mean, um, yeah, with two seconds, Ingerin doesn't really do anything, just prevents you from losing on time. I Actually, see. against Ray, I fell asleep even with 10 seconds on the clock. So. All right, well, um, next up, you'll be having the rematch with Ray Robson. We'll wish mm -hmm. you the best of luck in that match. Yeah, I'm eager for revenge. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna, if Ray's listening, I'm going to try and flag him tomorrow. <laughs> Every game. <laughs> <laughs> it worked in the St. Louis Rapid in Blitz. I, I think I flagged him in the, in the Blitz, yeah. And then I almost flagged him in the second Blitz game, but he managed to make a move with one second. Actually, even in our match the other day, he made a move with literally half a second on the clock. Yeah. Like, if I shouted or did anything stupid, he would just <laughs> lose on time. <laughs> but, I mean, Ray's, I must say also, Ray's a very good player. Like, I think he's only one year younger than me. Uh, I, I think he maybe hasn't reached his full potential yet. He's a slow starter. I must say, but he's pro improved tremendously in the last few years, and he's a very good player. And also now he's uh, improved positionally. He's playing more 1d4. Yeah, well, so it's going um, to be tough. Yeah. We'll absolutely be looking forward to this match. Mm -hmm. uh, back to you guys in the studio. Thank, Thank you, Kostya. Once again, our congratulations to Wesley. So, so impressive. So impressive. 